Adi, thank you so much for joining Nomi Podcast. I'm happy to learn more about Genie Data. Um, it's a really cool product you are building and, you know, super excited about this episode. Uh, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. The, uh, excited to be here. Excited to be representing Genie Data. We we're, we're a huge team and, and I'm grateful that I get to be the one to represent us over this uh, podcast yeah. show. <laughs> Please share what like, like the Genie Data is about, because I heard a lot on like Twitter spaces, you know, uh, people are excited about the possibilities it gives. So I wanted to listen, like, you know, the sum up and what does it give to other people and why you guys bullish on building on ordinals? Yeah, of course. So uh, I'll, I'll start with the background of Genie Data. With uh, with Genie Data, we've, we're a startup. We started about 16 months ago. And from that point, we were a data warehouse company, strictly data warehouse and collecting data on different chains and indexing different chains up to 10 different chains. And we still are indexing wow. them at this point um, from Starkware to Bitcoin to ETH to even Apto. So we were indexing all these different chains, just on-chain transactions and what's happening. And at the time, not much was happening on Bitcoin, not much building was occurring. And we slowly started to move into the Bitcoin core space when we first saw the BRC20 drop. That was that was what kind of interested us. And we saw the traction that it got and it gained. And we wanted we wanted in somehow. We wanted to create our name, create our our impact somehow, some way. And the way we did that was we created an RC20 indexer. So an RC20 protocol came out. And we we found it quite an interesting concept and more more nuanced and a little bit more optimized than BRC20 at the time. And we decided to go all in and create an ORC20 indexer. Do you think ordinals would become, you know, the meta for NFTs? Because that's what I think, but like when you guys saw the raise of PRC20s and the ORC20 protocol as well, like how much are you bullish on that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I think that was that was big. You know, when we yeah, saw yeah. we saw like new like a token standard being brought to ordinals, that was interesting. And it we were able to actually make a, a big imprint because we saw also that like it went from a $20 million, you know, tr- market cap in a sense or you know market to almost a billion dollars at one point so we also saw that and we were like okay there's a lot there's liquidity coming in here there's interest coming here there's traction coming here so let's start let's start you know kind of allocating our resources and our time to this space so i would say it has somewhat to do with ordinals the artist all of that. And then we also saw like a lot of artists and a lot of really great product projects coming onto the, to the, to the ordinals uh, space. So it just, it just was like perfect timing. Everything was aligning perfectly. So that's why we decided let's, let's do it. A lot of momentum, everything's here. Let's start, let's start getting involved. You're actually not the first podcast guest that's saying like you jump to ordinals through BRC20. So I, I really <laughs> like that. <laughs> like <laughs> altcoins on the Bitcoin are bringing more people and really cool people because like uh, what you guys do is really interesting. Please share with me like the possibilities of your platform. Maybe you can share the screen and we can go through really like how can I set up my account and what can I do inside and like all the details would be happy to, you know, dive deep into this. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I think there's a there's a lot of possibilities with with what we do. And we kind of are just unveiling the, the surface of what we can do. Well, we could we can make a huge impact on this space. And our most recent product, our ordinals specialized product where we have all the different meta protocols all the different protocols that are built on ordinals you can search and use and find and see all the different inscriptions that were you know inscribed on that particular protocol and exactly what people are holding on that protocol so uh you could connect your wallet and you'll see everything it's like uh i'm not sure if you're familiar but it's like a deep bank of you know 
ordinals. So it's pretty awesome. And then and then you have uh e eth scanner, e you know, um etherscan.io, very similar to that functionality as well. So you kind of get like one of uh you get a couple different avenues within that tool itself within our ordinals tool you get an asset manager tool and then you also get a very high-end search engine tool that can basically basically bring any any like thing that's happened in ordinals you can find that from the search tool that we have and yeah i can i can share it with you guys for sure Sounds give me fun. one sec yeah sure so basically pineapple also solves the indexing problem we have so many indexers right now, and there is not one that is solid. And uh, yeah, if it really solves the problem of indexing, then it, then it's amazing. I yeah, I would say I would say um, we we're trying to help that issue. You know, I'm not going to say we're going to be the only ones to solve. It. I think it, it's a core it's a cohort um issue that that can be solved. It's not going to just be us. It's going to be a lot of other players in the space, like. A lot. It has to be consensus where we all are building, and and there's many people, many different indexers. I think that's the way the index problem is, is can be solved. Is we have a ton of different indexers, and we all rely on each other to become more efficient and more efficient. Yeah, that's the building process. <laughs> exactly, and and it's only a couple. Like we always hear this in the spaces or wherever we're at. It's nine months. You know, we're only nine months into this whole ordinals ecosystem. So this is this is like the fundamental part that needs to be built. And I think it's happening as we speak. I think we're doing it. I think others are doing it. And uh, I think the next the next level of indexing will be open source indexing. And I think, you know, with other other projects that, that are that are, you know, making that initiative, we're we're more than happy happy to help when it comes when it comes to that you know but yeah i guess uh i'll go into the product itself so i connected my wallet here um so i'm already connected i don't hold many uh assets on this so if you uh don't don't think too much like i i'll show you my profile you guys will see it but um here is the ordinals heat map you can even change it to a listing if you wanted to so like you can see it this way as well and basically you'll see brc 20s are the majority of their uh minters today have been minting stats stats um 512 and then we can go here we can see some other ones that have been been being minted uh doge is small amount but some others and then um come over here the heat map is super nice it breaks down everything the numbers break down the number of minters and then we can go on this side and we can see uh, who's buying what, you know, so we see a smart money. This person got in early on um, this address. We can click on this address and it'll show us, you know, everything they hold. It will, it will give us uh, an idea of, so they, they don't have any inscriptions found, uh, but they have transactions that they've done. Cause I, yeah, that, that might have some time because something's happening with that whole issue, the inscription numbers and stuff. I'm not sure if our platform is um, going to do anything with that. But besides that, you can see it breaks it all down. BRC20 tokens, ORC20, if this guy holds any, or any ORC20 bitmaps, domain names, nothing. Um, and then they basically only hold BRC20 tokens. You can see this person. And it's considered a smart money wallet that just purchased 0.18 Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin worth of uh, it is sold actually. Sorry, sold. Um, looks like a hundred billion stats, so least amount of stats, which is 0.18 Bitcoin. So you can see all this happening. Uh, you can see mints here. It'll show you smart money, smart money. You'll have other ones that could pop up that are whales. You know, uh, you know, each one has like a specific. Uh, each one has like a specific uh, meaning, like smart money means they've got into a project when there's only a couple people that minted their address was known to get into projects when it was early on. Whale is they hold a lot of a specific, uh, they hold a lot of a, a specific uh, token standard or a, uh, a specific uh, project. And then there's also like volume inter, high volume inter. I, I'm trying to find it here. 
it's going all and you'll see uh, here high high volume inter means they paid a lot of a lot of money in inscription fees and then uh alpha minter means uh they they uh have really low inscription numbers uh they they inscribed really low uh, numbers so that's like alpha minter they've been in the space for a while so that's kind of like the four different categories we have there um so yeah that gives you like a great idea of what's happening you see all these uh stats right here it gives you gas fees gives you total inscriptions holders and then you know this might not be we might not have exactly 600,000 holders there might be you know every person might own a couple wallets and that might you know make it inflated the number but um yeah just like how i have a couple wallets i'm assuming you have a couple wallets and that that's that it's taking that into account and then you can come here to your profile this is my profile right now um i don't have many transactions just received and then inscriptions shows you all the different inscriptions that hap that have happened and the ones that are unconfirmed this is like the mem this is all the ones in the that are not on the mempool yet um and then you can come here you can even do a confirmed one so you can uncheck it and, and see all the ones that are confirmed and are on the mempool um so yeah you see all of that you could break it down to just see images you can break it down just to see text so as a as an artist, you can see what art is trending, what people like, and you can come here and and see what images, what art is doing well, um, you know, and and uh, we had a time like a couple of days ago where Bitcoin Faces was doing really well. So a lot of them were minted. I think over five hundred minters were doing it in a short period of time. So they got a lot of love, you know, SVG files, gifts to this. You know, you see different artwork. This is Bitcoin face right here. I'm not sure who these guys are, but this looks really cool. You can you can click on it. It'll tell you more about it. Uh, you can, it'll bring up your, you can even go to Magic Eden from here. So it doesn't belong to any, you know, Magic Eden tells you if it belongs to any collection or not. Um, but yeah, you can learn a lot from just that. And then, so then I went to inscriptions. Now I can go to the different indexes. So we have all the different, our tools, super comprehensive, right? So many different things we offer. You can see here a BRC20 indexer, uh, all the different transactions, all the holders of BRC20. It's a lot of holders compared to how many holders are in the home. So that, a third of the people that are in ordinals hold BRC20. So that's, that's a good, uh, it's a good sign for a healthy market. And it, basically you can come here and you see, okay, this is being minted there's a lot of holders and this is being minted quickly. So you can come here and be like, let me mint here. And you can go from our, from the index to the inscribe tool. And I can mint it if I wanted to, and I can pay, I can do all of that from our tool here and boom, you know, um, wow. it's a full stack. You have everything. <laughs> That's it. every, everything you I have. We have everything here and it's quite, a, it's quite awesome. And you can see all, all the things that are happening um, and then even ORC20, we indexed it and we just brought it over here. And yeah, obviously you can see it's a lot smaller, 6,500 holders only, uh, only 360,000 transactions compared to 29 million. So we know this is a, a lot more mature market than ORC20. Can and you yeah. distinguish for me, sorry, um, the difference between BRC and ORC? Actually, it's my first time meeting ORC. Like what does the O mean? Yeah, I mean, just to make it simple because i'm not the most technical person either i'm you know more of a business dev guy more of a front-end person not not a back-end guy but the, to put it simply you know brc20 is, is um is a little bit more of a gold standard in a sense i i and then and then orc20 is more like of a cash standard for brc20 so it makes it a little bit easier to to utilize and to build on top of um so you know brc20 is a little bit more and i don't want to like you know say anything it's just a little bit tougher to um to program and use it's an orc20 was is supposed to be a little bit easier the thing that made orc20 not get traction was the consensus issues so a lot of the people in the community couldn't really come to a, a consensus and that that made they were trying to do a lot of improvements to the protocol every like every week it almost was like and 
that might be a good thing. But the thing is, it, it no one it, it got to the point where there's too much, too much happening, and eventually, you know, people weren't people that were part of like the ORC DAO and and people trying to help build ORC twenty. There, there was a a falling out in a sense. So the consensus, it was it was tough for them to to come to a consensus, and um, PRC twenty just kept kept their standard the same, never really messed with it much and kept it pure and, and made sure that consensus was always there. And that was the most important thing to them. Yeah. So I wonder if I can create my own data inside, like if I have several collections and I'm an artist and I wanna show my collectors that this is the data that I have um, as an artist, do you have any tools to do that? Yes. And that's going to be different than our ordinals tool. So this is our ordinals tool right here, um, our homepage right here. And this gives you like more nuanced data that's happening real time in, in the ordinals market. And then you can also inscribe and do other things on here. And then there's another tool called our insight tool. And within this insight tool, you can create different dashboards that are... Um, that are happening like the most the newest one that was created was the omb the ordinal maxi um biz one that was created not too long ago eight hours ago and basically this was like a collection and uh D dog father and or data have been doing a 30-day challenge so the or data has created a couple in the last couple of days and he basically did a collection on what's happening with the OMB collection. So a number of inscriptions per day that happened uh, based on their eye color. And um, you see there, and it gives you a collection overview, kind of breaks everything down a little bit for you to see. It shows you inscriptions per address. So this address inscribed over 1,900 total assets. And it's not as interactive as obviously this tool, but what you could do is here, you could go here, copy this address, and then I can come over here and, and this, it'll show me like what this address is. And then I can type it in and it'll show me like here, this is the addresses that, this was the address that did 1900 inscriptions of, of OMB, but it sent it out. So it, it was probably a, uh, the, the main wallet. So let's do this one, the wallet that created the actual uh, protocol. So let's do this one and you can see like this, this guy holds a lot. This guy holds over, looks like, you know, seven OMBs and I got it all from, uh, it broke it down here, right? So this it says it has over a hundred actually total assets. It, it minted it or inscribed, I mean, inscribed that many assets. So you get all that, you get a breakdown there from that collection. You can go here. We can probably find another collection here. Bitcoin faces, another collection was made. And and this is not necessarily, we're not the ones creating this. This is people, collaborators are creating this on our platform and it, you can do it all here. So you can go come to query. So you can start um, gathering data and you come here, you create a new worksheet and boom, you got ordinals right here. So as soon as you're, as soon as you go to NFT collections and you can, I'm not sure how familiar you are with, uh, with, you know, um, you know, SQL, cause you gotta be able to know SQL and spark SQL decent, a decent amount. You can just use our tutorials that we have here. So everyone gets these tutorials, um, right here. And then you can like kind of copy paste the coding and play around with it a little bit, you know, and, and see like, See and and you just need to know where to where where to pull the data from. So you come here to ordinals and you just try to pull the data from one of these indexed uh and, and like yours should your should be there. Um but yeah, that, I would I would like if I was you, I would try to like get on the phone with maybe or data, he could help you out. Someone that can like help you move through this and uh you, sh you could you should be able to figure it out. Sounds like fun. <laughs> I yeah. love to learn like coding like a day by day. I'm learning more. And for me, it's just exciting. So um, thank you so much for sharing. I think it's awesome tool, not only for like artists myself, but also for other people, you know, that want to understand what's happening in the ordinal space and just to collect this data to to be able to trade, you know, sustainably and maybe to to see what's popping, what's dumping. And I think it's it's awesome. I wish you guys like 
success in the space because like it's the first uh, really tool that is um that allows to do so many functions and that mm-hmm. excites me the most yeah you guys are succeeding and uh, i wish you like more users more people onboarding what is your you know feedback about the ordinals community and maybe some future plans that you have in place yeah my personal feedback is i think the ordinals community is in, insane they're awesome they want to see this explode as much as uh, we do and they'll do whatever it takes so they'll, they they have a very high energy as far as collabing and making sure everyone you know gets uh gets their time to shine and and when there's good work being done they make sure people know it you know and i think that's uh that's important i think it's a great it's a great ecosystem super small right now but we're excited to be part of it and you know the sky's the limit when the bull run happens you know <laughs> yeah that's so true uh thank you for so much for joining uh was really nice speaking to you and i would be happy to share you know this episode with others i think people would learn a lot about just ordinal psycho system in general and how to track your nfts and how to get the da- uh, data yeah sounds good you're more than welcome to share it and yeah, I, I, it was a, a pleasure for uh, for us and for me to have, to be on here. So really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you for watching the Nomi podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, put your like, subscribe to my channel, and share with friends what I'm cooking here. I appreciate the feedback and questions in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter, Nomi underscore NFT, and see you in the next episode.